Hey everyone, Ben here with Customer Tech Talks. Today I'm joined by WestJet, who are gonna share with us some of their internal knowledge management processes. But before we get started, let's take a look at the video. WestJet is a Canadian airline. I love that we are all acting as owners in terms of mission and values and how we address our unique market. And of course, this past year has been quite the challenges that we've had to work together and collaborate to win in all ways. Personally, I love traveling. I love the opportunity that is given to me in terms of where I'm going to go next. From a company perspective, we're on a journey through digital transformation, through automation, through changing our culture to one of self-sufficiency. Microsoft and our digital journey are helping through the solutions and technology with this single pane of glass. We have a vision where Microsoft Teams will be our primary interface for all of our employees, regardless of whether they are a knowledge or corporate employee or they're in the front line, they're a pilot, a flight attendant, they're in catering. Everyone will be going through the Microsoft Teams platform to perform their duties to get their project completed. So I'm joined today by Lisa Amy, Senior Manager for End User Experience at WestJet. Lisa, great to have you with us. Thanks, Ben. Excited to be here. Now, I can imagine WestJet had a pretty eventful year last year and probably a big impact on business and other things going on, but this hasn't really stopped you from continuing to innovate and really take advantage of um, some of the systems you had on premises and dealing with those moving forward. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the projects you've undertaken in the, in the last 12 months? Absolutely. As the pandemic has rolled out, obviously, uh, whether we are flying 100 airplanes or two airplanes, at the end of the day, IT still has to run. So keeping the lights on and making sure that we were focused on the different priorities, ensuring we're not having any flight impacting delays and things like that has been critical for us as an airline. Over and above that, uh, we definitely have some legacy systems and some projects that we needed to prioritize and, and get underway. And one of those things was moving from SharePoint 2010 to SharePoint Online. And so uh, last year, we proceeded with doing that project in a very quick and tight timeline. And I can imagine, too, that there was probably a huge amount of information to move over. And there were probably some challenges as well around, you know, how you got that over there. How how long did it take you to, to take this migration from being on premises to being ready to go in the cloud? Honestly, it's actually one of the fastest projects I've done from a SharePoint migration perspective, uh, having done a few in my career. This was a three-month endeavor for us from start to finish, over 26 departments that we had to collaborate with, making sure that we understood what type of information, what type of data needed to come over, uh, making sure we didn't just, you know, garbage in, garbage out type of approach and making sure we're understanding what's actually required to continue to run our business. And so a very quick three month uh, engagement from start to finish, identifying the various areas we had to support, what pages needed to come over, what documents needed to be migrated as well, and then move that into our go live phase, uh, which was in December. All of that while we had a massively reduced workforce, right? So uh, the pandemic sadly hit us quite hard where uh, when I joined WestJet in January, 2020, we were over 14,000 employees. And when we were doing this particular project, we were just around 5,000 employees at that time. First of all, that's amazing to hear that even with that you know, reduction of resources and, and staff to be able to enact that, you managed to get that done in three months. I know historically when I've, I've worked in SharePoint migrations many moons ago and that a whole idea of what content stays and what content goes is a really big challenge to work with. Um, but of course, once you got that up there, you also identified a, a new opportunity within the business on how people could be more kind of self-service on the way they discover that content as well. Can you share how you approach this and, and what you did there? Absolutely. I should mention we did have a partner with us that helped us through this project as well, and that was Avanad. And Avanad actually are the ones that uh, mentioned to us perhaps with a new culture of self-sufficiency that we're trying to pivot towards, that we had an opportunity to use a chatbot. And so we followed suit. We took a look at it, uh, discovered very quickly that it would suit our needs and would be amazing for our staff as well, having a little bit of fun, which is part of our WestJet culture. And so we proceeded within about three weeks of standing up Power Virtual Agent we called our chatbot Romeo, which is the brother to Juliet, who uh, services our guests and our clients. And so Romeo is our internal chatbot through PVA uh, with Microsoft that helps us to answer questions from an end user perspective, really creating that culture of self-sufficiency and the ability for end users to, to uh, serve themselves a little bit more. 
So really great to see how you not only you know created this chatbot, but also gave it a kind of personality and partnered it with Juliet, your external facing chatbot, which is great. But I have to ask, can you show us Romeo? Absolutely, let's do it. Over here in Teams on the left navigation, we've got our pinned Romeo chatbot. And let's have a little conversation with Romeo. Asking Romeo or saying hello to Romeo to start. And Romeo answers back and, and you know that he is there and he's answering and he's ready to engage. So let's try a couple things like, um, what are our WestJet deals? Romeo will take us to a link to all the WestJet deals that are, ironically, located on SharePoint. Let's ask Romeo something else. What about uh, how do I hire someone? So sometimes there's more than one answer, perhaps. So we've got a hiring process, we've got onboarding, we've got talent acquisition, or perhaps it's actually none of those. And so you can select the card from there. Let's ask Romeo something about payroll. Again, taking us to the link around payroll information, as well as some frequently asked questions and a team or a distribution list that uh, we can email from here. Now, Westerners love to have fun, uh, caring from the heart and fun is part of our culture. So let's ask Romeo something fun, like, what's your favorite color? Of course, teal. <laughs> and that is our WestJet color and brand. Thanks, Romeo. I say goodbye, and he answers as well. Thanks for chatting. And that's it for Romeo. Now, I love how not only did you create this chatbot, but you really gave it some personality that was in line with the culture of WestJet. And the way you did this was actually really interesting. Can you talk about how you approached this and, and how you actually infused that, that culture of WestJet into the chatbot? For sure. So, you know, these types of projects, normally in my experience, you start with a smaller group, you you test kind of internally and you and you maybe have more than one phase. We went big. Uh, we went with People and Culture, which is one of our largest departments, largest end user and employee facing by far uh, from a People and Culture or P&C perspective, um, also known as HR commonly. Uh, HR really touches every avenue, every employee experience. So whether it's, you know, benefits, learning and development, talent acquisition and retention, it really hits all areas. And so there was a lot of content, a lot of topics, which really allowed us to play a little bit with our chatbot and answer all kinds of different questions, a uh, huge variety of questions and topics that we were able to achieve. Really great. And I love the idea of just going big or going home. It's uh, It makes a lot of sense to get great kind of uptake throughout the business for that uh, for that new service as well. Now, it's, it hasn't all been rosy. There have been some lessons learned along the way, both positive and, and also things you might do differently. Can you share some of those with the viewers today? For sure. So, I mean, going big, <laughs> we had a lot of content to feed into Romeo. And so one of the things we realized is we had a very short timeline once we made the decision on the chatbot. We had about three weeks before go live. Because the technology is so easy to use, I was able to not only teach myself, a non-technical person, on how to use the chatbot, but also others within the end user experience team. So we really divided and conquered. So we used Microsoft Planner as our Kanban kind of task board. We assigned the different topic and knowledge areas from the people and culture pages. And we each just kind of honed in on the, the topics and answers and questions that we wanted to feed into Romeo into the chatbot. So that was one lesson learned was divide and conquer. The chatbot is very easy to use. Uh, you don't need developers or super technical folks to actually feed uh, the intent and the questions and answers that are required. Thinking of other lessons learned, another one that comes to mind for me Coming from a smaller organization and WestJet being a larger organization, realizing the protocol that you have to go through for uh, like an architecture review type of thing. So I went ahead and made a decision to post and pin our Romeo chatbot icon to the left navigation of Microsoft Teams uh, without really getting any approvals and going through that. So making sure, you know, we take a, a more holistic view of what wants to be and what needs to be on your Microsoft Teams navigation, because uh, that navigation bar with pinning different apps can get very busy after a while. And for us, it was the right decision in the end. Romeo and the chatbot will be all-encompassing for all employees, and uh, it was the right call in the end. 
That's great. Some really great lessons there. And I'm so glad it worked out well, but also remembering that, you know, asking forgiveness over permission is not always the right approach to take, but really happy to hear that it, it panned out in the way you expected this time. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us on Customer Tech Talks. It's been great to hear your story and your journey. Thanks, Ben. I appreciate you having me. It was a pleasure. If you want to learn more about WestJet, you can check out the links on screen. If you're looking for information on how to get started with Power Virtual Agents and build your own chatbot, again, all of those links and resources are available to you now. Of course, if you want to hear more about Customer Tech Talks, be sure to check back on our channels and check us out on YouTube for more information. And we look forward to seeing you on the next Customer Tech Talks.